Uh, hi, Valencia, able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, so today's topic that we are starting will be geometry, right? So we'll start with the fundamentals of geometry. So that means, say, suppose any line like this, right? Isn't it? It extends on to infinity. If I say this is A, this is B, right? So it is extending on to infinity here. So this part is known as line segment, right? Got that? Yes. yes. Now, if I have any two intersecting lines, right? Isn't it? So these are called intersecting lines. So that means they are intersecting at any coordinate, which is x comma y, right? And how to get this point is to solve the equation simultaneously, right? Got that? Now, if the two lines are non-intersecting, then they are said to be parallel, right? Got that? Now, very quickly, we some come to something which is known as bearings, right? How does bearings work? So, yeah. So, that means, first of all, we'll draw a north, right? So, all the angles measured will be from north, taking clockwise direction as positive and anti-clockwise direction as negative, right? Isn't it? So, suppose if I say that the bearings of B from A is 40 degrees, what does that mean? First at A, I'll draw a north and then from here, I'll draw a point B, which is at 40 degrees measured clockwise, right? Got that? Now, if the same question says, what is the bearing of A from B? So, we'll draw a north here, right? So that means we have to measure this angle, got that? So how can we measure that? So if I extend this, these are the corresponding angles. So this must be 40 degrees and this is 180 degree, right? Got that? So that means we can add 180 plus 40 and we'll get it as 220 degrees, right? Got that Valencia? Please note this down. This is how we measure the angles in a bearing, right? So, the other properties are, uh, is this written down Valencia or writing something? Written down, sir. Right. So, the other properties that we are having in a triangle is the generic property. That means some of an angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. It's quite commonly used in most of the sums, right? So, if that's angle A, this is angle B, this is angle C. So we say angle A plus angle B plus angle C, and that must be equal to 180 degrees, right? Now, the other very important property, now a lot of sums are asked on these properties, which we'll be practicing now, it's called similarities. Right? So if you're going for similarities, what does similarity mean? Suppose I have two triangles, right? Now, listen this carefully, Valencia, because this is quite commonly asked in various forms, right? And you have other triangle, which is say X, Y, Z, right? And I said that triangles A and B are similar. What does that mean? So suppose if this length is A, this is B, and this length is C. So this length is X, this length is Y, and this length is C. So if these two triangles are similar, so that literally means that A by Y, right? Isn't it? Same sides, right? must be equal to C by Z, right? And must be equal to B by X. And that's equals to a factor K, which is known as a scale factor, right? Now, you need to decide whether which triangle is larger in length, so its length will be larger, or which triangle is smaller in length, so its length will be smaller, right? Depending on that, you can either multiply with a scale factor to get the larger length or divide by the scale factor to get the smaller length. Is this understood, Valencia, what I said? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, the questions asked are like this. Suppose if I have a triangle ABC, right? 
So this side is six, this is seven, and this is X, right? Now the other triangle, uh, hi Levin, able to hear me? Yes, yes. So Levin, this is what we are discussing is on similarities, right? So I just wrote down this formula for the scale factor, but that's the ratio of the sides, right? So I'm just giving you a sum to practice it on, right? So okay. Say, suppose this is Y, this is 12, and mm -hmm. this is Z. So I asked you, what is the value of X, Y, and Z? So Levin, uh, even Valencia, Valencia, able to hear me? Hello? Uh, Levin, able to hear me, right? Isn't it? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Please try for X, Y, and Z. Uh, Depending on this formula, right? 12 by 6 is equal to Z by X is equal to 7 by Y. Okay. First, if I ask you, what is a scale factor for? What's the value of K? What will you say, Levin? 12 by 6. <clears throat> Sorry, come up again. 12 by 6. So you said 12 by 6, which is 2, right? Isn't it? Since your scale factor is greater, right? Isn't it? Will the length of Y by YZ will be greater than BC? Uh, yes. Obviously. So that means you have to multiply this with 2, right? Isn't it? To get yeah. it as 14, right? Isn't it? Got that? Yeah. Now, can we have any particular solution for X and Z? 2X is equal to Z. So the only relation that we can have is X equals to twice Z, right? Isn't it? Or other 2X equals to Z, right? Isn't it? So it can take any values, isn't it? Understood? Yeah. Yes. yes. So moving ahead, we'll go on to a couple of questions based on this. Okay. Which is asked, right? So the other very important property for similarity is the area factor, right? Again, if I say, Suppose that's the triangle ABC and the scale factor is K, right? Yes. And that's the larger triangle, say X, Y, Z. Okay. And I'm assuming that K is greater than one, right? Got that? So if that's the area A1 and that's the area A2, so that's obvious that the area of A2 will be greater than A1. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. In that case, the area of A2 will be given as K square times the area of A1, right? Isn't it? Okay. Now, Levin, can you tell me why I assumed k is greater than one? What why? k can less can k be less than one as well, right? Isn't it? Yeah, but when k is greater than one, the image is an enlargement. The others image is uh, larger than the before image. Can I also assume k to be less than one? Yes. In that case, what will be the change in this form? Uh. A1 is equal to K squared into A2. Sure. So I just want A2. What can A2 be written in that case? I don't know. See, can I write like that? Yes. Isn't it? So that's the difference which I would like to bring into notice that if K is greater than one, it becomes straightforward multiplication, right? Isn't it? And if K is less than two, so you need to think because the area of A2 has to be larger than A1, right? So whether yeah. to multiply or to divide, that is something which you need to think, right? Understood? Okay. So yeah. yeah, so we'll give you a few problems on this. So it says that there are two triangles, which is similar. Okay. So ABC, so the length is two here. The length is 3 here. That's the larger triangle. X, Y, Z again. So yes. the length is 6 here. You need to get K here. And the area of this is 16 square meters, right? What should be the area of this? Please go for it, Levin. Uh, the length Z would be 4. Okay. Hello? Yeah. So that means you want to say K equals to 4, right? Isn't it? 
Yeah. Okay. What should be A1? A1 would be A1 is equal to uh, 16 by K square. So how much is that? 16 by K square. Uh, 3. 16 by k square, you said 3. 4, 4. Understood. So the area of this is 4, right? Isn't it? Got that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, same thing exists a relation for similarity between the volumes as well, right? How yes. does that work? The only thing is, see, 11. The only mm -hmm. thing is, if I'm getting area, I'm getting length into length, right? Isn't it? If I'm getting volume, so that's length into length into length. So three times length, right? Isn't it? Yes. That's for what it becomes k square and that's for what it becomes k cube, right? Isn't it? So that literally means, again, if there are two triangles, A, B, and C, right? The volume is V1. Again, it's a larger one, X, Y, Z. And we take k to be greater than one as a scale factor and that's the volume V2. So volume yes. V2 will be given as k cube times V1, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Got that? Yes. So let's practice a few questions based on this as well. Okay. Now, again, there are two triangles which are similar. In this case, the triangle is like this, right? Isn't it? Okay. Got that? So I said that the total length here is 10. This is 5, right? Isn't it? Yes. So the length here is, say, 6. So what should be x here, right? Isn't it? Okay. And what should be the area of this? Uh, area of that should be, wait one second. First one is scale factor, ten by six. It's one point six seven. X should be two point seven eight. Okay. So the volume must be. I asked area. Oh yeah, area, my bad. Why so confused, Levin? No, that's I'm the happy. larger one. 10 and 5, right? Isn't it? Okay. That's the smaller one, right? Isn't it? Yes. 6 and x, right? Yes. Clearly, if you want to get x, right? Isn't it? So that's the yes. smaller side. Got that? Yeah. So that means if you're writing k as 10 by 6, right? Isn't it? So if you cancel this out, so that's 5 by 3. That's your scale factor, right? Isn't it? Got that? So, yeah. since this is 5, this is bound to be smaller than 5, right? Isn't it? Any doubts? No. So, what should be x in that case? 2.8. 5 divided five. by 5 by 3, right? Isn't it? Any doubts? No. That's equals to 3, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Perfect. What should be the area of this triangle? Area should be uh... 4.5, isn't it? Half base into height. Simple. Yes. Right. See, sometimes you need to think what we are applying and where to apply. This is a right angle triangle, obviously, isn't it? Yes. So the area is half base into height, right? Got that? Yeah. Understood perfectly, Levin. Please note this down. Yeah. So always don't think about K and K square and all of those that you have to get the larger area, then get the smaller area. It's not like always that. <clears throat> Although you can do that way, right? Isn't it? Yes. But in this, the best way is I know my, my breadth and my height. I know my base, my height, so I can easily put half base into height, right? Yes. Okay. Once you have done this, please tell me so I can erase and go ahead. Yeah, I'm done. 
<coughs> the other topic that we are discussing under this head are called polygons. Another very important part, right? Yes. So, what is a polygon, basically? A shape which has five or more sides. Okay. That, uh, that means it has more than two sides, right? Basically, isn't it? All the all those shapes is polygon. Okay, I'll ask a couple of questions. Uh, I'll start from the basics. If I say pentagon, how many sides? Five. Okay, if I say um decagon. Decagon. Decagon, how much? Nine. And nonagon? I don't know. Nonagon is 9. Dekagon is 10. Right? Isn't it? Yes. So if it has N sides then? If it has N sides. It has a name called N gun. Right? Got that. Or oh. polygons as well. Right? Understood. Oh. Yes. So now, few important properties of a polygon. Right? Yes. So any prop any polygon will have an interior angle or an exterior. How does it look like? Say, suppose if I'm drawing any hexagon, right? Isn't it? Like that. That's an hexagon, right? So yeah. these angles are called interior angles, right? Yes. What is an exterior angle? That means if I extend the sides, right? Isn't it? Yes. Got that? These are my exterior angles. Understood? Yeah. Yes. So there are four formulas, basically, which deals with entire polygons, right? Okay. First of all, sum of interior angles, right? Yes. Can you tell me what it is? Uh, number of sides minus 2 into 180. So if I put it into n form, that's what you said, right? That's the first formula. Number 2 says each interior angle. n minus 2 into 180 by n. Perfect, right? Isn't it? Got that? Number three, it says sum of exterior angles. Mm, I don't know. I haven't learned the word. That. That's simple as 360 degrees, right? Sum of exterior angles, 360. Okay. Yes. Each exterior angle? 360 by N. Perfect. So these are the only four forms. You need to remember. Please what, write it down, Levin. Yeah. 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 Written down. So I'll yeah. just give you a few sums to practice on polygons, right? Yeah. So do it properly, right? Uh, how good do you like geometry, Levin? Uh, in math, one of my favorite topics is geometry. Geometry. Sorry, I couldn't get you. What you said? In math, one of my favorite topics are geometry. Oh, okay, like that. That's really yeah. good. It's easy. Yeah. But before I go into that, let's practice a few sums based on uh volume part also, right? I'll just place it on the board, right? Okay. Just for a practice, right? Yes. So I'll clear this canvas. So that's the cylinder. Yeah. This is eight, right? So you have to get this volume. And the larger one cylinders. Is. 54 and 12. Okay. So that's the volume and that's it. So you have to get V. Can you tell me that? Mm. For the scale factor 12 by 8. Yes. 1.5. So 50. Four divided by uh, eight, no, 1.5 Q. 
Can you tell me the value of V? Yeah, one second. Sixteen. Are you sure? I guess. And can you just explain how you got sixteen? Uh, fifty four divided by one point five cube. Okay, that's correct, right? Yeah. So now what I'll do is I'll give you few sums. To be based on polygons, right? Okay. I'll place it here only. Yes. Somehow it's not getting placed. That's a two marker, right? Okay. So they've drawn a taken like this, right? Yes. Right. So all the interior angles are B, right? Yes. Uh, the angle Sorry. And all the exterior angles are A, right? Yes. So what you have to find is the values of A and B, right? That's a two marker. The Go values of? The values of A and B. A and B. All okay. the interior angles are B. All the exterior angles are A. Yes. One second. B is 108. Okay. How did you get that? Uh, N minus 2 into 180. 5 minus 2 into 180. Yes. Divided by 5. Okay. And That's correct. B. Yeah. And then 180 minus 108 gives you the exterior angle 72. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm erasing this up. Okay. I'm placing the other one. I'll place some word problems, right? Okay. So it says that calculate the number of sides of a regular polygon whose interior you have to calculate the number of size of the polygon okay. where each interior angle right isn't it yeah is equals to 156 degrees okay yeah try for this tell me the value of n that's the number of sides 156 hmm. they haven't used the four formulas that i gave you right 15 how did you get that? Uh, I did trial and error. I, I checked all the... Uh -huh. No, no, no. What's the formula I made you write for each exterior angle, each interior angle? Uh, N minus 2 into 180 by N. Right? Yes. And that is equals to 156. That's given, right? Yes. So I can simply cross multiply 180 N minus 360 and that should be equal to 156 n right isn't it 180 i just opened the brackets right yeah yes any doubts no so that means if i bring n here so i got 24 n and that's equals to 360 right isn't it yes so i clearly got n equals to 360 by 24 right yes so the number of sites is 15. That's correct, but that's the method, right? Because you get one mark for writing this, one for this, and only one mark for the final answer. So even if you made a trial and you got the final answer correct, the two marks are gone, right? Yes. Please note this down. No. I'll make you practice few of these types as well. Yes. Yes. Done? Yeah. So I'm erasing this and I'm placing the other question of the similar type, right? I'll give you two, three, so that this part is perfect, right? Yes. So the other question based on this is, 
calculate the number of sides of a regular polygon whose each interior angle is 150, right? Okay. That's one part. So first question says, each interior angle is equals to 150. The second question says, each exterior angle is equals to 40. Tell me an answer for these two. It's 16 by 30. 12. Yes, say the first one is 12, you said, right? Right, Levin? Yes, first one is 12. Okay, tell me the second one. Yeah, one second. Second one is 9. That's correct, right? So now yes. you understood, right? Yeah. Now, let's place one more for you. So listen carefully. In each regular polygon, each interior angle is 140 degree greater than each exterior angle, right? Yes. I repeat myself and write down the information here. Yeah. It says that each interior angle is 140 degrees greater Greater than? than each exterior angle, right? Okay. Then find the number of sides. Try this one. Nine. How did you get that? 180 minus 140 gives you 40. So 40 is exterior. Mm -hmm. 11, 11. Yeah. Each interior angle is 140 degree greater than each exterior angle. You have to put it into the form, right? Because that's important. What is your equation? What you got as an equation? Uh, I just did it like 180 minus 140 is equal to 40 and 40. No, 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 no. Each okay. interior angle, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Minus each exterior angle must be equal to 140, right? Okay. That's how you have to do. Understood? That yeah. gives you one full mark for this. Also, you keep on doing a trial method. Makes no sense, right? Isn't it? No, but here I didn't do a trial. Try this and tell me the answer. Yeah, once. I'm not able to do this. Can you try? You'll Can see you see here. If I just open the brackets, so I got 180N minus 360, right? And then minus 360, and that should be equal to 140N. Any doubts? If I take up an LCM, it should be N, right? Okay. Now, that means 40N must be equal to 720, right? Yes. How much should be N? Say? 18. Perfect. Now understood? Yes. Perfectly understood, Levin. Yeah. Any but doubts here? Huh, see? In the fraction, the below mm -hmm. and uh, you I just... just cross multiplied. See, okay, I understood. I like the intermediate. So if I take up an LCM, it's N, right? If I bracket, open the bracket here, so that's 180N minus 360, right? Okay, Isn't it? That. Yes. Yeah. So I simply just skip this step to cross multiply, right? Uh, will it become n square or just an n? Don't you multiply the both numbers below? Okay, let's check this. If I add these two, what should be my LCM? Uh, can, one. What is my LCM? LCM, like... The way I do is I multiply the below uh, number for factor uh, numbers. Why? Uh, why? So, why need so? Because if these two are same, LCM will be same, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Makes no no difference. Yes. That's what because these two numbers were same, so okay, LCM will be same. same. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah, yeah. When, when it's not the same, I do this. Uh, nah, you have to multiply, right? Yes. Got that? Please note this down then. Yeah. That might be one of the types of twisted problems if they ask you directly, right? Yes. Okay.
Yes. So I'll place one more to check out how yeah. good Levin understood this, right? You got that? Yeah. Read the statement, I dictate it and put up here. So it says that in a regular polygon, each interior angle is 120 degree greater than the exterior, right? You got that? Yeah. Calculate the number of sides. 120, right? Yes, 120. Right. Absolutely correct. Now I think you understood, right? So the other part in geometry, which is very important. Can you name it? Levin? Which... A sure shot question on that is always asked. Can you name that? Trigonometry. No, no. I'm talking about geometry. A parallel sides. Yes, parallel lines, right? Yeah. I always say three things to remember. One is two lines are intersecting, right? Isn't it? Yeah. So vertically opposite angles are same, right? Yes. So that means I can say that angle X equals to angle Y, right? Again, if two lines are parallel and the transversal cuts them, right? Yes. So angles on the same side are same, right? Yes. So that's basically known as corresponding angles, right? The other very much important part where most of the students get confused is alternate angles, right? Yeah. I always say, look for a Z, right? Isn't it? Look at this Z, right? Isn't it? Isn't it? That's a yeah. Z, a big Z. Able to see that? Yes. So that means inside angles of Z should be same, right? Oh, yes. Got that. These are called alternate angles. Okay. So the easier way to recognize an alternate angle is that Z, right? Got that? Yeah. Please note these three things down there. I'll give you two minutes. Then we'll present a few problems on this. Yeah, one second. Yes. Right? So I'll then play the first problem. Okay. Now, not only you have to say which angle are similar, but the reason behind it, right? Why they are similar. Okay. So I'll try it. Oh, because this is not pasted. So I tried to draw it for you. So yes. these are two lines parallel, right? Mm. And a transversal is cutting them. Okay. Yeah. So the angles which they have mentioned is A, B, C. This is 64, right? That's A, that's B, and that's C, right? Yes. You have to find A, B, C, and the reasons. Oh. Okay. B is 64. Reason for it? Corresponding angle. Okay. A is what? 64. A is 116. Reason for it? Uh, one A, it's because the line is a straight line and one Supplementary eight. angles, right? Huh? It says set supplementary angles. If the sum of the angles is 180, it says it is set supplementary angles, right? Oh. Yeah. And the yeah. value of C? C, 64 because alternate angles, B and C. Vertically opposite angles, right? Yeah, vertically opposite angles. The reason should be perfect, oh. David. Because if you miss out on that statement, mm. it makes no, no sense, right? As in that. It's okay. I try to put this one up as well. No, this is a complicated figure, but I'll try to draw it for you. This one. Then. Yes. <laughs> So we have three parallel lines here, right? So that's one, that's two, and that's the third one, right? Yeah. Now, the two transversals are cutting at, okay? So that means the two transversals 
are cutting here, right? Yes. Okay. So this angle, they have given it as 64 degrees, okay? So this is 64, then it's AB and then it's 40, okay? So this is A, this is B, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And the exterior angle here is 40 degrees, right? So you have to get A and B. Okay. A is 64. Reason for that? Alternate angles. Okay. And B is 40 because corresponding angle. Perfect. Right. So now you are able to recognize the corresponding as well as the alternate, alternate angles. Right. <laughs> okay. If I ask you a question like this, let's check this out. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. This is my question. I just thought of, so I'm putting it up here. Right. So let there be two parallel lines, right? Okay. And the transversal is cutting them, right? Uh, this one, sorry. Yes. The transversal yes. cuts them, right? Okay. So if I say that this angle is 3x, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And this angle is 2x, right? What should be x then? 3x and 2x. Uh, x must be 180 by 5. 36. How did you get that? Because 2x uh is connected with a straight line and three x you just the uh corresponding angles okay absolutely five, correct five, right five, so this is this is also three x because it's a corresponding angles and five x equals to one eighty right yeah. understood yes okay so these are the all types of variations asked on parallel lines right very quickly we move on to one of the last part, but a very big part of geometry. What it is? I'll ask Levin again. Mm, which part? Can you think of geometry? And it's a very big part. Area and volumes. Area and volume in geometry. Uh, That's in mensuration, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Think. I don't know. You would have definitely heard about it, right? Right? Yes. Very vital part, right? So the according to the first theorem, <laughs> if that's the center and any perpendicular is drawn on mm -hmm. any chord, right? Got that? So if it's a perpendicular, so it will bisect the chord, right? Reverse is also true, right? That means if any line is bisecting the chord, it has to be the perpendicular from the center. Got yeah. that? Yes. Number two. If that's my circle, and if any arc subtains two angles at the circumference, right? Isn't it? So that's the arc AB. It is subtaining two angles at the circumference. That is angle X. So these two are same, right? Isn't it? Number three. If any arc is subtaining an angle at the center, right? And an angle at the circumference, right? It's the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So that means I can say that angle X is equal to twice angle Y, right? Okay, number four. <laughs> Any angle in the semicircle has to be 90 degrees, right? Yeah, it's the right angle. Why so, uh, Levin? I don't know. 
you said it's 90 degree, right? So you should know why it is 90 degree. It is shifted here now. Okay. So if I say it is subtended by the arc AB, so AB subtends an angle 180 degrees at the center. Yes or no? Yes. So that means it will subtend 90 degree at the, according to the theorem three, right? Isn't it? Yes. So that's just a corollary or an application of theorem three. Now understood? Yeah. Understood. That? yeah. Yes. Number five. Any radius is perpendicular to the tangent drop, right? The right tangent. 90. Yes. Number six. Length of the tangents drawn from the external point on the circle, right? Are equal in length. That means PA must be equal to PB, right? You got that? Please yes. note these down or whatever you would like to write. Please note it down. Yes. Because then I'll erase and place the other ones. Yes. Written? Yep. Right. So that also means number seven. Suppose if that's the circle and that's the point P, right? And I've drawn tangents from there. Yeah. So that means from the center, if I join this, right? That's the radius, right? Yes. So these two angles are also same, right? Yes. Because the opposite side is the radius, right? Yes. Number eight. Any cyclic quadrilateral, right? That means all four corners should lie on circumference. Okay. So that means angle X plus angle Y must be equal to 180 degrees, right? Yeah. Got that? Yes. Number nine, a very, very important theorem 11. I would ask you, what's the name of the theorem? A very important theorem. What's okay. the name of it? Tangent theorems. No. Okay. I give you the short form of it. AST. Okay. What it is? I don't know. Very, very important for exams. That's okay. called alternate segment theorem. Alternate segment theorem. Right? Yes. That's called alternate segment. Yeah. How does it look like? Please look carefully, right? Most yes. of the students get confused to this. If this is a chord, right? Yes. That's a tangent, right? Yes. If chord makes an angle alpha with the tangent, right? So if yes. I extend the two ends of the chord to meet at the circumference, so yes. this angle will also be alpha. This is yes. called alternate segment theorem. Understood? Yeah. yeah. Any chord making with a tangent and angle. So if I extend the two ends of the chord to meet at the circumference, the angle will be same, right? <laughs> uh, I have a doubt in this theorem. Like, in, uh, angle will it become? Will it become like the other angle? It makes it Z twice. No, this is this is same. That's because if I'm drawing a tangent, right? Isn't it? Got that? It's not in the first line, right? Which one you say? The first line which you do. The first line, sorry. The line which is connecting with the, uh, yeah, that one. This one, yeah. Huh. That's also... a chord. That's a chord of a circle, like this, right? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that's the tangent, right? Isn't it? Yeah. So that's the angle alpha, right? Yeah. So that should also be alpha. Understood? Okay. I'll show you with a sum also, right? Yes. But please remember this. Very, very important level. That's called alternate segment theorem. Please note it down. Yes. Done. Right. So just give me a minute. I'll stop sharing once and then try to put the images. Let's see if that is feasible, right? Yes. Because it has got a lot of sums to be practiced on. Oh. 
Yeah, because this is a bigger part, right? So it has a lot of sums. Okay, just give me one minute. I'm just sharing the screen again. Is it visible? Uh, yes. Uh -huh, okay, now try these ones, right? Once you're done, Levin, you can tell me the answers, right? And the reasons, right? For the first one, angle A is 27 because they are in the same, uh, they have the same, the chord connected to the same circumference. Okay. And B is 38 with the same reason. Okay. And 2, 20 is C. D okay. is I got that. Number three. three. And three. D is 41. C is, C is how much? Uh, C is 58. You said C is 15. Uh, no, no. I told D is 41. Okay. C is 58. And E is 30. Okay. Okay, go for fourth one. Fourth one, F is 40. Yes. And G is... One second, 180 minus 85. G is 50, H is also 50. How much is G? 55. Huh. That's correct, okay. Number yeah. five. Five A is thirty two. Okay. And B is eighty. Okay. C is C is forty three. How did you get that? Uh, 180 minus 80 minus 32 minus 25. Perfect. Go for six. Sixth. Hmm. Yeah. 180 minus 50 minus 26. X is X and uh, Y are 34. How did you get that? Uh, because 96 alternate to uh, vertically opposite angles. Yes. And 180 minus 96 minus 50 gives Perfect. you Y and X is the same. Okay. What's Z then? Z. Yeah, one second. How much? One second, one second. How much did I say? This was 20 minus 96 minus 50. 44, 40 plus 44, 74. One ninety minus four minus fifty. Z is fifty six. And how did you get that? Uh, cyclic quadrilateral. It's a cyclic quadrilateral. Mm -hmm. And y is thirty four and forty. So one eighty minus thirty four plus forty. Mm -hmm. Gives uh one oh six one oh six minus fifty gives you z eleven. Even if though your answer is correct, don't you think you took a longer way? This should be forty, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Why you already know? Can't you find z in this triangle? Simple. Why all the? Why you already know, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Can't you find Z in this triangle? Isn't it? Okay, yeah. Got that? Understood. Yes. Yes. Go for seven.
seven uh one eight one eighty minus ninety four divided by forty three. Correct. Eight. Forty six twenty two. Ninety two. Perfect. Nine. Forty two. Ten. Ten. Forty six is C. C is forty six. D is forty four. Okay, that's perfect, right? So I'll place few more, right? I'll just yeah. stop sharing for a moment, then I'll. You able to see them? Yes. Please go for this. A is 94. Perfect. B is uh, 75. Correct. And the second one, D is... One second. D minus 96. D is 84. Perfect. And C is 101. Perfect. Number three. So three mm -hmm. X is ninety two. Perfect. Y is one eighty minus Y is sixty four. Y is sixty four. Yes. How is that? Uh no no no. Y is one one six. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Go for four. B is forty five. Perfect. C is sixty. Yes. Go for five. Five. Hmm. Okay. One eighty minus one six divided by two. H is thirty seven. And how did you get that? Uh, A is the A is one o six. Okay. And since the two sides are same, two angles are the same, so one eighty minus one o six. Got that. Go for the other one. Six. One eight. Okay. Seventh one. Seven. Uh. E is thirty six. Perfect. H uh, F is seventy two. Perfect. Number eight. Eight. At sixty. How did you get that? I'm not sure, but then. Is it uh, alternate angles? No. None of the sides are parallel here. They haven't given that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So. Seventeen. One ten divided by one ten divided by two. Two one eight ten divided by 
55. How did you get that? Uh, one for one eighty minus one forty gives you sixty, and one eighty minus just one forty divided by two gives you the angle C. So, with C, you just uh one eighty minus. How much is this angle? Sixty. How much? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, forty. My bad, my bad, my bad. How much are these two? I uh, yeah, one second. Seventy, right? Yeah, Seventy. <laughs> How much is this? One one ten, right? Divided by two. How much should be this? Thirty five, right? Yes. Understood, eleven. Yes. Okay. Just give me a minute. We'll post few more. Able to see eleven? Yes. So these three. Uh, M is 50. Oh, uh, which one is 50? M. Okay. P is 80. Perfect. And K is 50. Perfect. Sum number 8. P is 46. P is 46. P is 46. How did you get that? Uh, the center is supposed to be 88. 40. Okay. Okay. And P minus 88, 92 divided by 2, 46. Perfect. Correct. How much is N? N should be 90. Mm, how do you get it? Mm, I'm not sure how to do it. How much is N? I don't know. Okay. So let's do it. That was the easiest part again. So eleven. Uh, you said P is forty six, right? Isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. So if I talk about this triangle, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? So can't yeah. I say forty four plus twenty eight plus forty six plus forty six plus n must okay, be equal yeah, to one eighty? Yeah. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. So I can easily get n, right? Yes. Okay. Go for nine. X must be one eighty. Sorry, how much you said? I didn't tell. One second. Um, okay. X is seventy. X is how much? Seven zero. Yeah. How did you get that? Uh, 30, uh, 180 minus 70 gives you oh, 110. So 360 minus uh, 220 gives 140. And 140 minus divided by 2 is 70. So, okay. You said x is 70, right? Yes. Okay. What about Y and Z? Uh, y should be... Yeah, got it. How much? One second. Y is 20. Fine. And how much is Z? And Z should be... Uh... One ten so thirty five. Uh thirty five minus nineteen. So one eight minus thirty five minus nineteen. Fifty five. That's correct, right? 
So these are a couple of things that we discussed today. Nevin was under geometry, right? The next topic uh, which I'll be discussing in the next session will be mensuration. 